Ladies and gentlemen, come gather around, come gather around, come gather around. Today, we're going to be changing the fourth fuel pump on this 77 Chevy Silverado. I went through three mechanical fuel pumps, good Carter brand pumps, in the first two years of ownership. We're now on year nine. <clears throat> I replaced it with a AC Delco, I want to say EP12S, like a smart cookie. I've been parking this truck against the house with the only tank that I fill being against the house so that if anybody's going to siphon gas they need to work at it. Except the fuel pump is on that side and it's a lowered truck and it doesn't move because the fuel pump is cacked. So uh, I'm in for a world of fun. It's spring. It's about three degrees outside and uh, here we go. Let's give her. Oh man, where to begin? First we're just going to push the vehicle kind of further away from the house. Since I have no friends, it takes a fair bit of work, but it's downhill so it's not that bad. Then we're going to get the floor jack, and I do have a couple blocks of wood to keep the vehicle from going over. going to throw a jack stand under there so I don't get squished. Then I have a good look at what I got here, and I'm removing the EP12S pump. I should probably add a picture, but I'm probably not going to. You'll notice the other pump in the background in preparation of putting it in. I did have to modify some of the bracketry just because this was a used pump and it had some issues with how it was installed. No insulators. So pulled the pump out and the joy of this is it will siphon your gas tank while you have it open and I neglected to have something to plug the line. So I'm trying to fit it with hex drive bits or whatever I happen to have. Good habit to have like a pencil in your shop coat so you can shove a pencil into the end of the hose. Um, unless you're a construction worker, in which case your pencils aren't going to fit quite right. Unless you have a rectangular fuel line, which would be un uncommon. So I left the thing just dangling there because I'm really trying to frantically get the pump hooked up so it doesn't leak fuel all over the place. Interestingly, gasoline will slowly dissolve your asphalt, so you kind of want to work a little bit quicker. It would have been nice to have this on my hoist in the shop, but my youngest son's car is in the shop and we're doing a timing chain, time, timing belt on that. So you'll see a video of that up shortly. If I remember to add a link, you will see it here. But lying on there and... I confess I didn't really have a whole lot of really good camera shots, especially under the vehicle, because I'm an idiot and I didn't check to see and I didn't really stage this. It's just I need to drive this truck and I need a pump working. Not a good idea to use a lighter with heat shrink tubing when you've just had the fuel system split open and gasoline all over the place, but I was feeling lucky and I was gambling. And then we connect her all up, set her down and see if she works. Flooded. That quick. So I just got back from Lord Co. Because while I did some giggity Google on fuel pumps, and everybody's like, oh, the 4070 is the bomb. That's the one you want to get. So I got a 4070. Turns out um, <laughs> it's rated at 6 to 8 PSI. And mine's putting out a lot more than that because it instantly flooded. So I want to find out how much pressure is this thing actually giving. And this old school guy pegged 10 pounds. So whether that's accurate or not, it's definitely more than it needs to be. Got some more hose, because nothing lasts forever, like the cold November rain. And for an importantly large amount of money, I picked up a regulator. This is set to go about 5-ish PSI. Uh, says 1 to 6 pounds. And a Rochester likes three to five. So I'm going to plug this in, tap that in line, and we should be good to go. I know the 4070 is a good pump, but that's not a good pressure. Um, and I'm going to need to change the oil too, because it's, it's uh, likely full of fuel. All right, let's go. It's so way down here at the bottom. We've got the old fuel line, and I want to put the regulator somewhere away from the heat. But in a place that's easy to get to. And uh, yeah, this is not McLovin' me here. Oh boy. 
Come on, boy. All right, life hack. If you can't get the line off, you cut it like this. I mean, I just bought five feet more hose, so I'm gonna be okay. But you cut it like that. I mean, it's not stuck. It's not flexing because it's old and crippled. All right, moving on. Well, you always drop the one you need. This is three eighths, and I'll keep the others. I want the regulator. It's like sixty-five bucks for this. It's annoying. It's not one thing, it's always another. Now, these, you don't really want Teflon going through, potentially going through your fuel lines. So you're gonna put a little bit of this group on here. It's like uh, thread sealant. It may not be fuel happy, but uh, it's not gonna put Teflon through your fuel lines. You don't want that Teflon tape going there. I think I should have brought a wrench for this. Oh man, I can feel the cheap already. Should have brought wrenches out of the shop. The uh, thread sealer has a best before date. You will know by the smell if you've passed that best before date. I'm going to grab a wrench for this. All right, back from the shop. And there's an in and an out. So the in is going to go off towards the tank, so it's got to go that way. We're going to put a little bit of fuel hose on there. Ugh. I'm going to put it relatively down low. Oh man, good heavens. And where do I want that to sit? I'll leave it like that. So I'm gonna cut this pretty short. <clears throat> Maybe about there. Oh. And I've been using crimp hose clamps on this. Not sure that's the best, but I got a couple of these which are probably better. I've set this to four PSI, which is what a Rochester likes. Three to five, so four should be good. And that is not aging well, so I will replace that. Yeah. Go, this guy on there. So, don't know if you can see that. I'd light a match, but there's leaking fuel. <laughs> Probably getting a good look at my beefy arm. All right, we've got the regulator tucked around down there. Fuel line coming up, coming up nowhere. Make sure you put this on the right way so you don't send all of that goo back into the engine, all the stuff you've been filtering. You now make the engine eat it. That's dumb. There we go. Filter. Blink. And blink. And then we see if it works. And because the fuel pump and no regulator filled up the float bowl, filled up the carburetor, filled up the intake, and then filled up the oil pan, uh, I'm changing the oil. I use a diesel rated oil that's high in detergents and can handle the abuse. It's also a flat tappet cam, so I use a zinc additive 
every single oil change. Some of you guys are going to say, oh my gosh, don't use a sink additive, don't use a break-in additive every time. Been using it for nine years. It's going to be okay. Saves the cam. Let's go. So oil changes are one of the ways you can make your engine last as long as possible. I run a high quality oil, try to run a reasonable quality filter, and I try to change the oil on a regular basis. Typically, I change the oil about every three months on my vehicles because you can go through a crap ton of oil before rebuilding the engine is cost effective. So we're draining her out. This thing, like any typical Chevy, leaks a fair bit, burns a little bit, and uh, it just, it is what it is. I like this little pail that I can mix my oil elixir of goodness in. I think I got it at Canadian Tire. Works good. The drain pan's cool. I'm not sure why it's green, but that's what it is. I like to make my own funnels out of old oil containers. Those are always handy. Then I pour all the goo into the motor. Oh, and this one takes five liters, five quarts, whatever. They're pretty much the same. And then top it up and make sure it's looking saucy. So here's the final install of the fuel pump. Sitting in there. Going to the switch to get different tanks. Pump heading off that way. Pretty good. And that's how we put the fuel pump in the 77 Chevy Silverado and change the oil because we needed a regulator. Thanks for watching. Take care.